Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm doing a new segment called Just For Fun, where I play around with audio and music production topics, software and techniques, just for fun, just for shits and giggles. So today, uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do a limiter showdown, where I test out four different limiters on three different uh, genres of music and see which one I like the most. Um, today I'm going to be using the stock adaptive limiter in Logic, which I've used a lot in the past. Uh, the Waves L1 Ultra Maximizer, I've also used this quite a bit in the past. Uh, my current favorite mastering limiter, which is the uh, Pro L limiter from FabFilter. And the underdog here, pun intended, uh, is the uh, Sausage Fattener by Dada Life. This is really, this is the shits and giggles part of it right here, is trying out the Sausage Fattener, which I've never ever used before but for $29 I figured I had to buy it and and uh, and try it out so um, all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the adaptive limiter and uh, what I'm gonna do is I've got the level meter and logic up here I've got the set to uh, meter the RMS level so that means I'm gonna be paying attention to um, the blue uh, the blue uh, levels here and the on the first test what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the uh, the gain on all four limiters to be negative 10 RMS, which is sort of like a rough, loose mastering um, volume reference level for mastering. Um, so I've got three different songs. I've got this sort of Coldplay pop instrumental remix. I've got this EDM track, and I've got a rock track. So let's try out the adaptive limiter. Uh, I'm going to pull the gain up until the uh, level meter gets to negative uh, 10 RMS. So I'm going to be monitoring the blue levels right here. But first, let's listen to this and let's see what the uh, let's see what the RMS levels are before uh, we add the limiter in there. So it looks like we're uh, the RMS levels somewhere around negative 19. The peak levels around negative four or five. Um, so let me pull up the gain until I get the uh, the volume I want. All right, so it's it's not the cleanest limiter in the world, but it's it's pretty clean. Um, let's move up to the um, the L1 now. So let's try the L1 out. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to reset the meter here, and I'm gonna pull the threshold down until we get to about negative 10 RMS. Yeah, I feel like with the uh, the L1, I can get a lot more gain quicker, and I feel like it's a little bit cleaner. It's still a little bit crispy, um, but it's it, I think it's better than the the Logic um, the Logic uh, uh, adaptive limiter. Let's try the Pro L. This is my all time uh, at least current favorite uh, limiter for mastering. I feel like it gives me the cleanest sound possible. For all these, I'm using the uh, the transparent uh, style. So I'm gonna pull the gain up until I get to negative ten. So I'll reset this again. Yeah, I feel like out of the three I've listened to so far, the Pro L has the most clarity. I feel like I can still push this a little bit further if I need to and get even more gain out of this if I had to without losing uh, too much of the clarity. Uh, all right, so let's go with the uh, sausage fattener here and see what this does. Uh, I'm not going to be playing with the color knob because that's more of like a, a harmonic enhancement knob. I'm just going to be playing with the fatness knob. Yeah, this one's um, this one's pretty dirty sounding. It's sort of like on par with the uh, the adaptive limiter. Um, I really feel like the winners here are the L1 and the Pro L. Uh, I am pretty impressed by how much gain you can get out of the the sausage fattener for like a twenty nine dollar plug in. Uh, plus, you get the extra color option if you want to add some brightness to it. But I really feel like uh, the the adaptive limiter and the sausage fattener are pretty uh, pretty dirty sounding. I can hear a lot of crispiness in there. 
a uh, little bit of sort of distortion in the signal that I wouldn't normally want. Let's try the EDM track, um, a, genre, a genre where volume is uh, particularly an issue. Um, so let's just reset the uh, meter here and let's try out the, uh, the, uh, the EDM track. And actually what I'm going to do for all these is I'm going to go up to the, the drop uh, where the loudest part of the song is. I'm going to just pull this up uh, to about right here. All right, so that was roughly about 10. Sounds pretty good. Uh, let's try out the Pro L here. Yeah, to me, the Pro L still sounds a lot clearer than the Adaptive Limiter. Let's try out the, uh, the L1. Same thing. Yeah, again, the L1's closer to the Pro L, in my opinion, than the Adaptive Limiter is, but it still doesn't get, uh, produce the same amount of clarity that the Pro L is giving me. Let's try the Sausage Fattener now. I'm going to pull this down. Yeah, not bad. I actually feel like the Sausage Fattener on EDM music to me sounds better than the uh the the L1 not still not better than the Pro L but uh the sausage fattener here still in my opinion beats the adaptive limiter and the L1 so um let's give this a try on some on a rock track here so let's start with the adaptive limiter first Yeah, it sounds a little bit uh, sort of crispy in the high end. The, the clarity of the track's really not there. Let's try the Pro L. I feel like the low end is better maintained with the Pro L, and I'm hearing more clarity on the top end. Uh, let's give the L1 a shot here. Sort of on par with the Pro L. Um, I feel like the low end was maintained a little bit better. The high end is is, I, I guess the high end crispiness isn't so bad here because we've got sort of uh, distorted guitar up there. But I just feel like the Pro L has a little bit more clarity than the L1. Uh, let's try out the Sausage Fattener. Yeah, I was just A-B-ing some of these. I'm actually pretty impressed with what the Sausage Fattener is doing. Uh, still like the Pro-L the most out of all of them. So the my my opinion here is that the Pro-L kills all uh, the other three uh, limiters. Let's try this at sort of like an extreme loudness level. Let's maybe go to, you know, this time, let's maybe go to like negative six RMS. Something that's just ridiculously loud, but we'll see which one maintains the most amount of clarity um, up to that level. And you know what, for this, instead of using the Coldplay track, I'm going to use the, uh, the EDM track, um, just because it's the loudest one of the three.
Yeah, for this, I've pretty much maxed out what the adaptive limiter can do, and it's just completely crispy in the high end. The snare drum sounds just awful. Um, let's try the L1 next. You know what? At extreme loudness, the L1 is actually worse than the uh, the adaptive limiter. I feel like the L1 here actually uh, is worse than the Logic stock uh, limiter. Let's try out the uh, the Pro L next. I have a feeling it's still going to be crispy, but I have a feeling it's still going to be more clear uh, than the other two. Oh yeah, that that's miles better than the uh, the adaptive limiter or the, the 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 L1. The Pro L, the snare drum is doesn't sound like it's being completely flattened. It still f feels like the snare drum has some punch to it. It's not just a a flattened off truncated snare drum that has like fizzle to it. So yeah, the other two would just sound very distorted. Uh, let's try out the sausage fattener, see how well it fares in extreme loudness levels. Yeah, the Sausage Fattener, believe it or not, comes in second here, in my opinion, um, for extreme loudness. And, you know, that's one of the things that's sort of marketed as, you know, jokingly marketed as the Sausage Fattener, um, you know, does well for electronic music. Um, my To wrap things up, um, keep in mind, a lot of these things I'm hearing are, you know, five or 10 percent differences between these plugins. They're not like... Um, except for like the end there with the crispiness of the the L1 of the adaptive limiter, but um, in a lot of ways, a lot of these differences are five and ten percent differences. And if anything, maybe this points out the difference between say a ten or fifteen percent difference between the sausage fattener and the Pro L. And considering that you pay twenty nine bucks for the sausage fattener and two hundred dollars for the Pro L, or the fact that you get the adaptive limiter included with Logic, so. I, what I would say is at lower limiting levels, I think, it, across, first of all, across the board, I prefer the Pro-L. It wins in, in pretty much every department. So we'll just we'll just knock that out right now. Um, for the other three, I would say at sort of lower limiting levels, I prefer the L1 and the Sausage Fattener over the Adaptive Limiter. But at high volume levels... I actually prefer the Sausage Fattener over the other two, and I prefer the Adaptive Limiter over the L1. At really high levels, I think the L1 loses. At lower levels, the L1 probably wins over the other two. But uh, in all four, in, in any category, the Pro L beats uh, uh, all all four of them. So all of the of, of the four of them, it's the best. So, so I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this little uh, sort of off the cuff video. I just figured I'd try out something fun. Let me know if you like this format and. I'll try it out here and there, not regularly, but just here and there with some other fun things. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel to see multiple new videos added every week. Also, you can check out carneymediagroup.com where you can view all of my video tutorials, search for specific topics, download the videos ad-free, and in some cases you can purchase session content so you can work along with me in the video. Also, please consider giving a monthly contribution at patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.